Vladimir Lenin, the fearless leader of the Russian Revolution, assumed absolute power in the USSR after he was created. After Lenin died in 1924, two men tried to assume their fallen leader's place. Joseph Stalin was one of these men. Stalin was a Bolshevik leader during the revolution and became the general secretary of the Communist Party, giving him enormous power over the lower class of party officials. In Lenin's later years, he started to find Stalin weak and unfit for his position. However, Stalin was undeterred and continued his quest for power. After Lenin's death, power was concentrated in the Politburo, the leading group of the Central Congress. Stalin quickly found allies in the Politburo. Grigory Zinoviev, a longtime communist and friend of Lenin, was one of these men. Lev Kemenev, a founding member of the Politburo, was another. These three men formed a triumvirate of power in the Politburo. Their chief enemy? Leon Trotsky. Trotsky was the other man who sought Lenin's throne. Practically speaking, he was perhaps the better candidate for the job. Trotsky was a longtime socialist and supported the 1905 Russian Revolution. However, at that time, Tr Trotsky was a leading member of the Mensheviks, not the Bolsheviks. But in 1917, when things started looking good for the Bolsheviks, he joined and was welcomed with open arms. Trotsky later distinguished himself by leading the War Commission during the Russian Civil War. He quickly grew to become one of Lenin's top lieutenants. Trotsky was a great leader. He was strong-willed, trustworthy, bold, and a very powerful speaker. As opposed to the brash George and Stalin, he seemed like the obvious choice for Lenin's successor. However, Stalin's triumvirate proved too powerful for Trotsky to face. Alone, with no supporters on the Politburo, he was quickly forced out of Soviet politics and was all but removed from Soviet political life. Stalin's triumvirate now shared enormous power within the Soviet Union. Stalin, however, did not like sharing. Stalin soon turned on his allies and formed new alliances with the right wing of the Politburo. Nikolai Bukharin was the unofficial leader of a right wing faction on the Politburo and the man who strongly supported the continuation of Lenin's NEP. Stalin allied with Bukharin and his supporters, Alexei Rykov and Mikhail Tomsky. Stalin's former allies, Kemenev and Zinoviev, allied with their former enemy, Trotsky. Trotsky, now revitalized with allies, quickly turned against Stalin's NEP. Trotsky felt that the Soviet Union must focus on promoting international revolutions, for Marx taught that communism must be global. Stalin, however, disregarded Marx's views and promoted socialism in one country. Stalin supported the NEP and the industrialization and used his influence to slowly undermine Trotsky's power. In 1925, at the 14th Party Congress, Trotsky, Zinoviev, and Kemenev were defeated. Zinoviev was forced off the Politburo, and three new members joined. All were longtime supporters of Stalin Molotov, Kalinin, and Voroshilov. Trotsky, Zinoviev, and Kemenev still tried to pry the Soviet Union from Stalin's hands. Still sticking to the belief that, the, that socialism cannot exist in Russia alone and that the NEP was not socialist. But Stalin's faction was too powerful, and later in the year all three were forced out of the party, and Trotsky was completely exiled. Zinoviev and Kemenev, seeing what happened to Trotsky, quickly recanted their beliefs and apologized, and were let back into the party. But Stalin wasn't done yet. He once again turned it against his allies, Ukraine, Tomsky, and Rykov. Stalin used his influence to force them out of the party. He now ruled absolutely, with just as much authority as the Tsars he helped depose. Trotsky was now removed from Soviet politics completely. But that wasn't enough for Stalin. Stalin wanted to completely remove Trotsky from history. He had thousands of pictures destroyed, and hundreds of others doctored to remove Trotsky and other dissenters, such as this picture here, which shows Trotsky and Lenin. As you can see in this doctored picture, Stalin had Trotsky completely removed from the picture, not wanting anyone to be able to prove that Lenin and Trotsky worked together. 
In 1940, Stalin, still angry at Trotsky and fueled by the blood from the purges, had Trotsky killed in his Mexican home. Trotsky was killed on August 20th by a Soviet agent. Though it took six years, the political chaos that resulted from Lenin's death was ended. Stalin used his wit, harshness, and brutality to remove his opponents and seize ultimate power in the Soviet government. Stalin's form of government would influence how later Soviet leaders and other communist governments would rule.